Atom Audio T5V and, and T7V. Now, no one watches these reviews more than five minutes. Did you know that? My average view time is right about six minutes. And that's only because my videos are like 26 minutes long. So there's 20 minutes that no one watches. So I'll get it right off the bat. Zeos, are the Atom T5Vs better than the JBL 305Ps? Yes. The king is dead, long live the king. So that's a big statement. That's a fucking bold, bold. Zeos is so bold this new season. Here's the thing. Everyone's been telling me to suck on Adam's D for a long time. Like I'm talking about the way back, way back to when, when this was like the option, when it was the option for the Adams, was the A5Xs. This pair of Adams is a thousand dollars. And they're like, oh, you have to get these, and you got to compare them against your Motivas, because your Motivas use the same tweeters design. Okay, I'm going to walk out of the room now. I didn't... I'm not going to compare a $1,000 pair of powered monitors against, you know, a $400 pair of powered monitors just because people ask me to. But when Adam comes out with the T-Line, which is just these two speakers, and one is $400 a pair, these little babies are $400 a pair, and then these are $500 a pair. And I, I, I had to make a decision because it was like, all right, Patreon money, where am I throwing it? Where am I throwing the money? And it was at the five inch because it was, I had just had the 305Ps. It's time to invest in something else. I buy the 305Ps. I hit the next track button. Wait. Julio Iglesias comes on and I'm like, Fuck. Oh, fuck there, guy. I go about, oh, I don't know, two weeks maybe? And then I take more of that big Patreon money, which by the way, thank you everyone for supporting me and allowing me to do this bullshit. Pick it up and I throw $500 at the T7Vs. So that's happened once before with the Emotivas. I bought the Emotiva Airmotive 5s and I loved them and I put them up on my speaker stands and I'm like, holy shit, these almost do my living room. And then I bought the Air Motive Sixes, and those absolutely fucking just bend my living room over and just take it to town. It was an upgrade. It was a sound that went up. So I'm like, that was the last time I bought something small in the lineup, and then went, oh god, I gotta do something bigger. Very similar to the Yamo C93 Dark Apples, and I'm like, oh shit, they make a 103, and I went up to that. So I spent four hundred dollars. And then these were so good, I spent 500 more dollars. So I've spent a total of $900 on my own on these Atom monitors. Fast forward to about a month ago, I get an email from Atom Audio saying, have you heard of our new T-Line? We'd love to send you either the fives or the sevens. And I'm like, I actually bought them already. And he's like, well, that's great. Would you like to try one of the other things we have? And I'm like, give me the A5Xs. Like, they offered me the A8, A8s. I want to stick with the fives, A, because they're smaller, and B, because they're, they're smaller. Because here's the thing. This review is not going, oh my God, Chewbacca, the hair. The hair in my sub for Chewbacca. Oh, oh God. Not during the review, baby, clean up. I love the fives. I fucking love... Not this song. <laughs> love is a strong word. I'm gonna stick with it. Because I have them in my living room. I don't usually do powered monitors in my living room. If I'm gonna talk about powered monitors, I'm usually gonna walk them in here and I'm gonna put them on my little desk. And I'm gonna use them in a the near field like this, and they're gonna be my powered monitors. Oh, here's how they go. I'm gonna review the A5Xs in this room on this desk. But I'm not gonna review these in here, in there. I mean, here and here, these are in here. These are in here. I'm gonna review these in here because I'm pretty certain these will be the standard purchase for anyone with a living room. Not the sevens, the fives. I bought the fives, I listened to the fives in the living room first, then on my desk, and honestly, my favorite speakers of all time, those Swan M200 Mark III's, favorite speakers of all time, uh, these compete directly. Directly, 
when people ask me what's better, the 305 P's or the Swans, I have to edge the Swans. Now if people ask me what's better, the Atom T5Vs or the Swans, I'm gonna do this with my hand until they go away. It's like I broke. Just walk away. Because they're about the same price. These are just full-fledged monitors. Let me tell you why they beat the 305 P's, okay? 305 P's, waveguide, crazy big sound. Like you listen to, to music and it's just big. 305 P's project in this amazing area around it. It's like, oh shit. But have you seen the 305 P's? They ugly. They real ugly. Like it's sad. The 305s were nice. The LSR 305s were okay. You know, 305Ps hid the, the the screw holes and everything, but they made them shiny plastic. And it's like, why, why, why? So there was a gap in the perfection of like the for the looks department. I think we all agree. These atoms look fuck all fantastic. That's just there's no screws, just like the, the it's just plain as a slight edge here. It's a deep, solid box, way more solid than the 305Ps. Better build quality. On the back it says, it says made in China, I'm sure. But it also says, Adam Audio, Berlin, Germany. Not just Germany, that's too non-specific for the Germans. Berlin, Germany. This postal code. This street at this time. Germans. So, these atoms show up and I'm just mentally prepared to like, okay, they're just gonna be, you know, entry level. But, so they don't do, what the 305Ps do is this. They do a big wash, a wash of wild sound, and I love it. I still love the 305Ps. I'm not, these are not so much better than the 305Ps are all fucking garbage. Now that's dumb. What these do is what the swans do. They do this. You see this? You see, what I'm, see which direction I'm facing now? Depth. These do imaging, detail, and depth. And that, that's what the swans do. When I was listening to the swans, you wanna talk about the Mackies? Because I have the six inch Mackies. I still love those two. But again, I never said let's put them up in the living room. I just said on a desk at quiet volumes, the Mackies are kings. And you know what, if I play this song really quiet, let's crank that down to negative 38 decibels. It doesn't sound all that, it's like, like this level, at this level you hear me speaking and then I get close and it's like, like eh, like this is eh still. The Mackies, that's the benefit of the Mackies. The Mackies make this super enjoyable, this level. These sort of gotta go up. Wait, wait, oh, there it is, we're starting to get it. Up in your arms too late to beg you, or cancel it though I know it must be. Okay, that's uh, Echo and the Bunny Men, The Killing Moon from the Donnie Darko soundtrack. These are a different, I want to say type of sound, but it's kind of like using a shotgun or a rifle. That's what the, the JBLs versus these. Whereas the, these are much, much more delicate. The JBLs impress. You put them up, there's bass and there's, ooh. But these are just fucking refined. I could just smell it. My nose feels it in it. And we're in the living room because I think people are gonna buy these to hook up to their television instead of a soundbar. So let me let me describe that for you because again, we're, we're past the five minute mark, no one's watching anymore. You spend $400 on Atom Audios. You go on your desk, you're set, you buy an interface, you buy a, uh, Origin G2, linked in the description. You use that, you plug the wire in that's linked in the description, you turn the knob, speakers get louder, speakers get quieter, you flip the switch, you listen to headphones. Living room, you buy this. This, I've been, this has been on my wish list for eight years, and it disappeared, and then it came back, and here it is, and I think it's on Amazon. I hope it's on Amazon, because MCM Electronics is not that reliable. And I'd love to show you the remote control for it, but it's lost somewhere in the ether. And it's just a shitty little remote that says, volume up, volume down, mute. But this, for like 40 bucks, I think, is input RCAs, output RCAs, a power plug for the wall, and an infrared volume control. And that's it. And there's no indicator to show what the volume's at, but what you would do, because the atoms, let's take a look at the back of them. 
and I can lean them on their face because they're they have no expo ex extended uh, drivers port high frequency low frequency I've got the low frequency bumped plus two here's a special thing about Adam that I've never seen in another speaker it's another powered monitor most of them will do high frequency up and down and then low frequency or room correction or bass effect or whatever will go from zero to negative two to negative four these are some of the only speakers I see you can put the bass up and I have the bass up because look at the room we're in and putting that up will limit the amount of absolute volume you can get before distortion happens but I mean I'm getting pretty loud so the level here, level knob is smooth, there's no clicks, from negative 60 to zero, there's no detents, you have to sort of like guess, and then plus 18 on the Evite. That's a childish Gambino lyric. You got an XLR, which is what I have, with a switch to let you choose between XLR or RCA. There isn't even, there isn't even a spot for a quarter inch adapter. So it's all RCA with a negative 10 dB or XLR with a plus four. And there's your power and there's your switch. Don't get hot. The back of these, these have been running, playing music, playing music pretty fucking violently. They're not even warm, they're cold. If I got, if I like hurt my hand, I'd put it against the back of these speakers to uh, control the swelling. So what you do is you get the MCM uh, audio controller you get a set of Amazon Basics RCAs because you can pull, you can peel them apart. You get them and there's two. And you can take and you can just peel them apart. And you can peel them all the way apart, all the way till they separate. You put this in your cabinet. You plug the speakers into the output, one and one. Then on the input, if you've got a TV with line outs, that's fine. If not, I will link in the description a Fio D3. It's a $20 little deck. Optical in, RCA out. You go. TV, fiber optic, D3, RCA out to in, RCA out to speakers, you're done. You could also, and then you get a little crappy remote, which if you have a Logitech or a, um, what's the other brand of learning remote, whatever. If you have a learning remote, you can literally teach it, hey, make this control the volume. Because I don't think you're going to find that, that thing's codes anywhere. So you just have to deal with it. The other option is if you want to be a little bit more spendy, Instead of spending $30, $20 on a DAC and $40 on a controller, you go out and get one of those mini DSP HD. It's got to be the HD version. And then you plug speakers in, fiber optic in, you tr tell it whatever remote control you want to control it, and then you have two extra RCAs for subwoofers in the future, either one or two subwoofers. We're, we are, people's living rooms if you're looking to spend $200 to fix your living room, I got a solution for that. It's in there and I'll get to them. But if you're looking to spend like five, $600, you sold. Now here's the thing. I'm gonna talk about the sevens for a bit. And I'm gonna hook them up. I think I'm gonna hook them up. I wanna play the fives a little bit more. Just a little bit. Not, not notorious, notorious. You know how loud that is right now? I'm gonna talk at a normal volume and you gotta try to hear what I'm saying over no Grand Grand Notorious, Notorious, and it's fucking loud. That is dumb, and dumb loud, and it's just, just no effect. Bass up, ooh. Wait, wait, wait. These are absolutely some of the best fucking powered monitors I've ever heard. We're gonna to get to the A5Xs and how I think those are probably very accurate, but I don't enjoy them. I enjoy these. And because I enjoyed these so much, I went out and pooped down another $500 on the sevens. Look at the back of it. Uh, it's identical, identical to the fives. It was, I, boom. By the way, you also notice there's no power LED in the front, nothing at all. You don't need to shut these off. Little green light, a green light comes on and you never touch them again. So, Zeos, why are you recommending the fives and not the sevens? I think the bass response is better on the fives. Straight up, straight up talking to your face. I, I know the sevens get louder. They're just look at the fucking size difference, right? 
almost the same depth. The, the, the seven is actually slightly shorter, but you're looking at a width increase of like an inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter wider. And how much taller is this? Minus the foam, like two inches taller. This is a big, big speaker for only a hundred dollars more. See, that's the thing that's bothering me. They're so close in price. People are going to go, oh, I could just get the sevens and not the fives. Here's what I figured out. And it took me a while to figure this out. The fives are much more impressive sounding speakers. The low end comes out of nowhere and you don't expect it. And the imaging and oh my fucking God. Then you upgrade to the sevens. You upgrade to the sevens. And here's what's going to happen. You're going to get one of the most balanced sounding speakers, but that impressiveness that like normal people will tone in on isn't quite there. You buy the sevens if you're actually mixing music. I was in Nearfield with the sevens for weeks, weeks. And I never I like I had the fives there for a while. And I would get home and I'd want to listen to something on the fives. I want to hear the fives make sound. I would sing at me, make this song. I want to hear this song. I want to hear this song. Then I put the sevens there and it was just a pair of speakers. By the way, link to this in the description. It's designed to sit on like your, it's designed to sit. Any anime figure is designed to sit. If it f sits, it, it sits. The sevens just sort of sat there. And I would, you know, open up videos and the videos would play and I'd hear audio and I'd be fine. And I'd, Maybe I hear a song and I'd open it, but I never wanted to, to just endlessly sit in front of the sevens and listen to music. The fives on the other hand, I did. So whatever school of thought, if you're, if you're a study of psychology, you should write a book on acoustical psychology and figure out what that is. Because I love the fives and I'm okay with the sevens. Here's what's happening. Yard sales coming up, right? Every every month in my Patreon. If you don't know, the Patreon linked in the upper right of the description, I have a yard sale. Things I've purchased in the past, I reviewed them, I ain't got no fucking room, I sell them in the yard sale from the 1st to the 10th. The sevens will be in the yard sale. They'll, it, I have the original boxes, you place your bid, whatever it is, $8 and I pay shipping. If you're international, you place your bid, Whatever it is, I pay half shipping. I figure out the shipping and you pay half shipping. You could own these sevens. You could, you could bid $217.41 because you can't use whole numbers. And if you win, I pay shipping in the United States. It's probably gonna cost me 50 bucks to ship both of those. And you got a really, really, really good pair of speakers for cheap. But I'm not selling the fives. I'm not selling the fives. They're too good. I love them too much. They do too much to impress me. Should I go to someone's, like, if someone calls me up and says, hey man, I'm having a Super Bowl party, and uh, yeah, but my TV speakers are kind of shit. Can you bring something over? Because I know you got a ton. These are coming with me for the Super Bowl party. I'm gonna, I've watched movies. I've got them set up as my front channels. I could integrate those subwoofers in with them if I want to, which I kind of have to, because it'll send like eight hertz to those and they'll explode. But I I'm just sitting here like, Listen to the low end. Do you, do you see subwoofers on? No. This is just... This is a weird Evil Dead song. How are you so good? How are they so good? Let's switch to the sevens in this song. Uh, power off. Plug out. Plug out. Chewbacca, you can hold these for a second? Yeah. The fives stay forever. I, I look at my wall and go, okay, what am I getting rid of there? Because I really should make it a point to sell something else if I'm keeping these. What do they replace though? I don't have the 305Ps. I sold those already in the yard sale. The other 305s I have are my old babies and they just sit there using, using as vent speakers because they reproduce vocals really well and they don't get hot, just like these don't get hot. Power up. High frequencies zero, low frequencies up. Can I do this without knocking her over? The answer is yes.
a deciding yes. So, don't fall. It's really well painted. High frequencies, low frequencies. Oh, Jesus, it figures. Perfect. Add a little weeb to your life. Let's back that up a little bit. So here's the thing, the timber of the speakers doesn't change. The actual upper end where it's like, ooh, her, but it's just more calming. I was excited hearing it out of those. And out of these, it's just sort of like, yeah. They sound bigger, they sound bigger. They sound more full is what I'm gonna say, but I don't know if I necessarily want that sound. It's super weird and I'm probably a baddie and everyone's gonna be like, well, they measure so much better. They probably do measure so much better. I'm just... <laughs> Like that's a bassy thing that's happening. That's when the helicopter comes in the handsome family. And I'm just looking at the speakers move. And I've got the bass plus two. And it's just, I'm not feeling it as much. It's like they're tuned to be more flat than those. And I stand, I, trust me, it takes, a, it takes a while for someone to say, hey, my $500 purchase isn't as good as my $400 purchase. That's a, lot, a very hard thing for the human brain to wrap, wrap itself around. Like right there, wait. There's like a low, like, and it's just. Maybe it's too boomy. It's just, it's not the same as what I, I just had those on seconds ago. I was skipping through tracks. One more time, your butts are in the street. I am sick and tired of your I think what it might be is I, I don't expect what I hear out of those fives to come out of the fives. And what I get out of the sevens is sort of like right on average of what I expect. It's not greater. If what came out of the fives came out of the sevens but bigger, these would be the only speakers I own. I just sell everything else. Sell it all. It's all garbage. It's all garbage at this point. So it's a very strange mix. Take the bass off. Maybe the bass boost is freaking it out. Low frequency up is, is bad. Let's go down. Oh, um, a little caveat for and I'm gonna I'm gonna say this is an atom problem and not specific to the T series because the fives do it too. Hey. Hey. By no means are these bad or they're doing anything bad. I love what they're doing. It's just that low end is, would be there. There's the low end, and this is doing like a bigger, definitely can get louder sound. Automatic, I didn't even change the volume, and it's just louder. So here's, here's the basic line of it. If you're getting these for a desk, buy the fives. If you have a living room, and you want to hook up speakers for your TV, if you've got RCA out, or you've got a fiber optic out, if you want to get a mini DSP, we want to do the little cheap FIO and the little MCM controller. Get the fives. Get the sevens only if you are actually doing production work. That, that's, my, that's what I'm going with. I'm going with these sound. They don't sound boring, but they sound more boring. Which usually in the world of like mixing and mastering, boring is good. Do you fuck your husband? Like y'all be tussling? Do you wear that muscle? I'm actually lowering it. I'm taking I'm lowering the volume. It's too loud for me to sit here. Alright. The bass song I go to is Oh Mama. Keep it in the hosiery. I'm known in my town and those strips where high rollers be. Up up early where the money falls. Where's the low end? Is it further back? So I move back and I'm starting to get the low end. I'm starting to it's just maybe go move back even more. It's just just keep moving back. Okay, now I'm a mile away. 
Notice me sat by, they cry when I choke the speed. Set this crooked city on fire to light the smoke of me. The old time is so The bass is here, but it's nowhere. The bass on the fives, you feel it everywhere at every distance. And on a desk, I'm just, you just don't feel it. I had them set up there for a short period of time. Then when I had my monitor straight against the wall here for a short, for a long period of time, it was the only speaker I used. Cause I was trying to like figure out how to make them go and I couldn't make them go. And it's, it's just, my room's not big enough. They make bass, but it's just, you have to be, let's see, that's this is a 15 foot space. Put my head a foot away from that wall. It's 14 feet. Put these two feet. You need to be 13 or 12 feet away from the speakers to make them happen. And that's usually not going to happen. Buy the fives. When in doubt, buy the fives. If you want to try the sevens, don't return the fives till you've heard the sevens. Then you listen to the sevens. You go, you know what? All right. I return the fives. And then keep the sevens. Otherwise, you're going to do exactly like I'm doing, where you bought the fives, bought the sevens, and sort of go, eh. Keep the fives. On a desk, you want the smaller ones. They just, it all happens much sooner, much faster. It's all happening. The low end. The treble, the highs, the mid-range, the vocal clarity is everything you'd expect in a, a, a powered monitor from Adam, from Berlin, Germany. It's all good in the hood. I'm aiming right at his ovaries. What kind of line is that? It's a great line. Yeah, the, if these were bass cannons, if these were just throwing low end from any place and they were wild, I'd probably like them a little more. Personally, as like a personal sound. But I understand what they're here for. They're they're, these do their job for monitoring and mixing and mastering. And these are what everyone's going to enjoy listening to more. They're, they're not, they're the ones I'm recommending over the sevens. Real, real pros are going to be like, oh, the sevens are the way to go. And we'll get to the five X's. They're a thousand dollar pair. I have to give them their own review. And I'm going to do this with my hand at them, but that's for another review. Oh, the one problem I was talking about, the one problem that I think all atoms share is this. Volume discrepancies between the speakers. When I had them set up and I was doing home theater in here, so I'm doing legit, I have no center channel, which means I'm sharing left and right, which means I do distance and I make sure everything's level and then it's straight. I was just cranking them up to plus 18, right? Like to zero, there's no zero stop. So you're sort of like, I had to adjust every spare, the fives, the sevens and the other fives all have different maximum volume gains. All of them. None of them, like you just turn it up. I, on the JBLs, on the Emotivas, on the Mackies, you set them to zero, they go click, click, zero, you put them all the way to maximum, they're always your dead center, it's perfect. Atoms always have a volume discrepancy. Put them both up to 18, I'm both up to 18 right now, and if I put this into mono and I sat here and I listened, it'd probably be biased like this far. And I'd have to go behind this speaker and just lower it like that much. And then it would be fine. It's just, a, that's a little thing that you only get at, on Z reviews when you're sitting here staring at them for weeks. Why does it take you four months to do a review, Zeos? Because that's the stupid problem that you don't notice right away. These are some of the prettiest looking powered monitors. Prettiest speakers. Can we just go on prettiest speakers? Chewbacca, sleepy sleep. Can we just go on prettiest looking speakers? Yeah, they're black. Yeah, they're, but they're dull. I mean, they collect a little bit of fingerprints. This is a plastic fascia, but they just, they're just an air of quality about them that the JBLs no longer have. The Mackies look beautiful. I love the way the Mackies look. They look really high end. The Emotivas are a little bit mm, stealth bombery, but these are the best looking ones. Well, those are these. I also like to look at that. It's actually as deep as it is tall, basically. Big cubes. All right. I'm linking to a bunch of stuff in the description. Link into the fives, which you're all gonna fucking buy now. Here's the question. Did you make it to this part of the, maybe I'll comment on this timestamp. Should I keep my 305Ps or should I get the Adams T5Bs? 
keep your 305Ps. They do an amazing job. I personally prefer what comes out of the T5Vs over the 305Ps. You know what, and that might change. I might set up both pairs at some point, and I might walk from one room to another, and I'm like, you know what, this song, I wanna hear that wash versus the depth. Because the JBLs do a wash, and these Adams do a depth thing. And the detail, and that tweeter is just so fucking fine. You so fine, girl. So yeah, there's my review of the Adam T5s and T7s. Um, they're both excellent. The T7s have a very narrow purchasing window. You are actually mastering and mixing on these speakers, get the sevens. You're doing games, music, living room, parties, bar mitzvahs, um, what's that, orgies. You wanna do background music for an orgy. You're a pole dancer or something, you wanna have music in your studio, the fives. Well, actually in a music in a studio, you may want the volume of the sevens, but you, I haven't had an issue with volume on the, on the fives. Oh, the parachute ending. See, I know this song. I know this song. This is Birdie Nom Nom's The Parachute Ending, and that bass should just be... Go all the way into my kitchen. Let's go all the way into my kitchen. See, there it is, sort of. But then I walk away. And then there's just nothing. So it's just, it just you just can't make bass go, and even the... Even back there, fives are better. I like the fives over the sevens. Get the sevens if you're mixing and mastering. And links in the description and the wallpaper. Oh, I've got her. And if you want to sign up for that Patreon thing, uh, I've included a ten dollar a ten dollar tier now that gets you into a private Telegram chat where I answer your questions. We're actually I answer your questions along with anybody else who's paying ten dollars on my Patreon, which is interesting because those people usually have a lot of expensive stuff and sort of know what they're doing but they still want me to advise them. Uh, the yard sales, which I talked about, which these will be appearing in. Whatever the month is now, if right now is, let me think, if right now is September, come October 1st, you're gonna see these in a video and they're gonna be like, hey, you wanna buy them. So you'll have till October 10th to join the Patreon for $5 or more and a bid on them. So, oh, I also updated the headphone list on Arzios, but I don't think that quite matters for this video, but when I update the speaker list or the powered monitor list, I'm gonna really strip it down and only talk about speakers that I've actually reviewed because I used to just, I hadn't reviewed enough to actually make the list proper. So that'll be redone at some point, maybe not before this, but maybe it will be. And I'll also link to her. She's from something, but she sits on the speaker. So it's, you know, I can now weave everything out. Weave it all, weave it all out. Thank you for stopping by. Good night, Chewbacca. Good night. Sound demos in the description.